Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I am a premier field engineer specializing in management technologies. Today's discussion is part 18 of an ongoing series focused on application deployment in Configuration Manager, which of course is part of Microsoft Endpoint Manager. The focus of today's discussion will be to discuss the task sequence integration capability that was introduced in Configuration Manager 2002. My lab is using Config Manager 2006, really not much difference between 2002 and 2006. Uh, one thing to note is that this feature is still one that is in pre-release, right? Sometimes I don't record uh, videos on pre-release features, but this one is cool enough and useful enough uh, that I wanted to go ahead and get this done and out there. Uh, I know some of the changes that are going to come uh, as this moves from pre-release to uh, out of pre-release, and uh, those changes are interesting, but uh, the core functionality, like all the pre-release features, are, is going to remain the same. So. Uh, the other thing about this is I'm talking about task sequence integration, which brings to mind OSD, right? There are limitations as to what you can do in the application deployment world. For example, your task sequence cannot be an operating system deployment task sequence. We'll talk about this more uh, in a little bit, right? But if you don't understand what task sequencing is and you've never worked with it, then there's a whole series of videos that I've produced uh, talking about it. Uh, in detail, how it works, how to make it useful, how to work in different scenarios, right? There's a lot that you can do with task sequences. In fact, to me, this particular addition has been a long time coming because task, sequence, uh, task sequences being used to deploy very complex applications uh, is really the way to go, right? Um, because there's so much control you can have and predictability you can have with task sequences, but we'll save that for a bit of the demo and walkthrough and so on. So, what's our agenda? So, like before, we're going to talk about, uh, like most like most discussions, we'll talk about what are um, task sequence deployment types. Uh, why do we care about task sequence deployment types? We'll look at the requirements of task sequence deployment types, a few scenarios. I'll walk you through configuring them, and then I'll show you uh, show you the task sequence deployment type in action. That will be the minor part of the demo, because it happens pretty quickly. Then we'll wrap up with some troubleshooting tips and tricks. All right, so what are task sequence deployment types? Well, these were introduced in Configuration Manager 2002. They are currently pre-release. They were in 2002. They still are in 2006. And essentially what a task sequence deployment type is, is a new application model deployment type, just like you could have a script deployment type or an MSI deployment type or whatever other kind of deployment type. Now there's one that is a task sequence deployment type, and it supports all of the things you would think that it would in an application model. You'll see that uh, in a minute. So why do we care? Well, again, complication app, uh, co complex application deployment. There is no better solution than a task sequence. There's amazing power in uh, the task sequence, being able to take full advantage of that task sequence engine to manage things like reboots. Yeah, reboots are supported. You can't do that outside of a task sequence with the normal application. Uh, nested task sequences, yeah, those are supported too. Uninstalling by task sequence, totally supported. Right now, I'll give you some thoughts on that as we go along. So this will install like an application. So the application is going to show up in Software Center just like normal uh, when, the, uh, when, when the task is kicked off. You will see the task sequence progress bar. Um, if I recall, you didn't in 2002, but you do in 2006. I could be wrong on that. It's been a while. Um, but I know that you will in 2006, you'll see it in a minute. Um, but the application will still silently install, even uh, even though the task sequence is showing up, the progress of the task sequence, the applications will install just like you would expect from a, uh, from a task sequence deployment. All right. So uh, what are the requirements of this? Well, you need Configuration Manager 2002 base. Uh, the task sequence cannot have uh, it has to be a non-OS deployment. It can also uh, not be an OS upgrade task sequence. You can't have this task sequence be a high-impact uh, task sequence. In fact, let me um, 
Let me pull them up in the lab just a second to show you what I mean by that. All right, one second. Okay, so if I look under uh, task sequences now, operating system, which will take me back to the top. Nope, didn't. Okay, cool. Uh, look under task sequences. And go to properties on one. I'll just pick this one. I'll pick this one. Whatever doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Then on the um, uh, task sequence tab, you have a couple of options here. The one that I we care about is performance. So if you go to performance, you'll see run as a high. Uh, sorry, I said I said that wrong. Not performance. We're looking for high impact. This one's still interesting though. Uh, you can in the task sequence. Tell it to run in a high performance plan, but that's not part of this discussion. Sorry. What I meant to do is click on user uh, notification where uh, you can flag this task sequence as a high impact task sequence. So, in order to use the task sequence through the application model, uh, it cannot be a high impact uh, task sequence. And then there's certain task sequence steps that you have to uh, realize that you cannot use. For example, if you have some operating system deployment task sequence, steps like format and partition and things like that no you can't use those only non-operating system deployment steps can be used things like check readiness or connect to network folder or download package content or install package and all of those kinds of things set dynamic variables and so on right and then finally um the the applications or packages and that's a little asterisk real quick uh, if you look at our documentation in installing applications through the task sequence is not supported, right? So that may be something that changes going forward. We don't know. Again, this is a pre-release feature, so not sure exactly what changes are on the roadmap. There are some that I know, but I don't know about all of them probably. Um, our documentation calls out installing applications through a task sequence that is part of an application uh, is not supported. You can use packages, right? And, and that's the recommendation. So if you do use packages, then you need to make sure they are allowed to install through the task sequence without user, uh, uh, user or, or sorry, without being deployed. Okay. Now, what are some scenarios for the task sequence deployment type? Well, there's so many scenarios that I could probably pull off, uh, and you could too, that I just listed a few. Right. So application dependencies. If you have a pretty complex uh, application deployment where you need to make sure certain dependencies are in place, that you need to have order of operations be very specific all the way through, there's no better option for you uh, than a task sequence. If you have something that needs to be able to handle multiple reboots or even a single reboot to be able to get the job done, uh, there's no better option for you than a task sequence. Right. Um, Specific order of operations already mentioned, right? There's so many scenarios that I can think of that customers have struggled with through the years that a task sequence would be perfect for, and now we have one, all right? Okay, so how do we go about configuring task sequence integration into a deployment type, right? Well, the first step is that we need to build our task sequence. So I'm going to show you, let me pull the, um, the lab back in. We'll spend the rest of the time really uh, in the demo section. So here's the lab, right? You want to build your install task sequences. Now mine are very, very, very simple. And I've got a few or a couple of different scenarios, right? So the first thing is I have a, a demo app. I call it app. It's really a package. It's an install uh, of rich copy, right? Very, very simple. Um, here I'm just installing a package, and that package happens to be uh, rich copy, right? Well, you see that I have another task sequence that is an uninstall. Now, this one's interesting, right? Because notice, notice what I have here. This is just, again, an install a package, right? Well, my uninstall task sequence is effectively the same thing. The only thing I do different here is I add in a reboot to show you that it will work through there, but then my install package is going to install rich copy, but it's going to use the program that's going to cause it to uninstall. So a little bit of weird logic there. It's going to install, but it's actually going to uninstall when it installs, if that makes sense, right? So I'll show you this one. You'll actually see the reboot uh, as we go through. 
And then I have another one that is going to do both the install and the uninstall, right? So I'm going to, let me pause here for a little bit, right? So again, how you do this is up to you. You can uh, really figure out a lot of different scenarios to do what you want to do. But notice this, so I have an install. So, so whenever I deploy my application, I will have for my install task sequence, this, right? For my uninstall task sequence, I will have this. When I do my application, you'll see that in a minute. Now, another way I could do it is just simply say, install and uninstall will use this task sequence. Now I build the logic into my task sequence to be able to handle the install and the uninstall. So let me show you what I have. Right? So if I do an edit here on this one, I have an install application and an uninstall application just doing basically the same exact thing, except here, it, the way that I know that this should install the application is by reading a variable that basically says app install status equals install. Uh, I'll pass that in. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, here's my uninstall. My option there would be to have that variable read uninstall, right? Now, again, I'll show you how this fits together in the uh, app model here in a second, but let me just show you how I did this one. So basically, well, I'll hold, I'll hold on that for a minute, right? Right. So uh, once I, once I get that, once I get that done, uh, the task sequence built, then I need to add it to an application and create an application deployment type. So let me show you how you do that, right? So what I'm going to do in my in applications, let me just walk you through it for a minute. I have a couple here, but let me just walk through the wizard. I'm going to create the application, and I don't have anything here about task sequence, right? So I'm just going to say manual to pass this screen, and I'll just fill in some placeholders to pass the screen because I have a couple of things I'm going to show you in a minute. Just placeholders here. Um, okay, so I'm going to add. So this is where I see my deployment types, right? And so on the drop down at the very bottom is where I see my task sequence deployment type. Notice it's going to shift the wizard into manual mode, but it's going to, to gear the wizard toward a task sequence, right? So I'll give it a name, and then I'll stop here in a minute. Uh, I'm going to specify, have the ability to specify an install task sequence and an uninstall task sequence. Now, let me call your attention back to the task sequences. Let me move this out of the way that I have created. Um, so here, sorry, here's where you see the uninstall and the install task sequence, right? So this is where I would plug in, let me cancel this. I would plug in my task sequences that I have created right here. Uh, un, uh, install right here, uninstall right here, or I could use this in both places because the logic of the install and the uninstall is handled within uh, the task sequence itself. And then the detection logic on the application model will determine um, that the product is installed or uninstalled already. And so it just kind of works together, right? Um, okay, now back to my application. So let me show you the couple that I have configured. So here's my uh, demo one. The demo one is using the install and the uninstall separately. In fact, let me just go straight to the deployment type. Go up here again, deployment types. And okay. So going to properties on that. And if I look at my task sequence, I have my install task sequence, my uninstall task sequence. My detection method is just like I would normally do. In this case, it's an MSI, so I'll use that. Uh, user experience. Now, this is going to be uh, a task sequence I'm going to install for system. And um, uh, in this case, only when a user is logged on, it could be different if you want it to be. Uh, requirements and all these things that are very similar to what you would expect in a, um, a task sequence. Now, uh, I deploy this just like I would, right? I'm just going to deploy it to my all Windows 10 systems. So that's a collection that has uh, a couple of demo Windows 10 systems in it. No big deal. Here's my second demo, though, right? So let's go look at the de deployment type here. 
So here, uh, my deployment type is the same exact thing. The only thing is I'm using my install and my uninstall task sequence here, right? Just right up here. I could browse to it and use it here as well if I wanted to. I, I just didn't. I'm putting it as a placeholder here. Um, why not? Let's go ahead and do un install, uninstall. So I'd have it in both places, you know, whatever. Um, all right. And then uh, I'll hit OK on that. Now, I've got this deployed as well to my Windows 10 uh, collection or collection of Windows 10 devices, as you can see on the, uh, the deployments tab here, right? And so I showed you in this task sequence, uh, the, the one for the un install and uninstall, that I am accommodating both the install and the uninstall. How am I controlling that? I'm doing it through task sequence variable. Where am I setting those task sequence variables? Well, if I go to Assets and Compliance and look at my device collections, then you'll see my Windows 10 uh, collection with a couple of machines in it, right here. Uh, this has three devices in it. And then I have two, in this case, these are child collections. They don't have to be child collections at all. They're child collections only because I want the Windows 10 systems to uh, be impacted. But but basically, if you'll recall, if you haven't spent time with OSD and, and variables and so on, it doesn't matter where you set the variable as long as the variable is uh, is tagged onto a collection that contains the devices that you care about, then the devices will get that, that, that variable through policy, right? So in this case, I'm using these two collections to set my variables, but I'm not deploying anything to these two collections. The machines that are in these collections are also here, and so the machines get the task sequence deployment or the application deployment with the task sequence through this collection, but they receive their variable instruction through these collections. So right here on, on this one, if I look at properties, uh, then you'll see the collection variable in this case. Uh, oh, I think I picked the wrong one. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, I did. Install, uh, that's for another demo I'm going to do. Install here. Uh, collection variable will, um, will be uh, app install status, install. So any devices that are part of this collection will have that SMS or uh, task sequence status set to install. So when they get that task sequence and process it, they will know they need to go install that particular application. Whereas those that are in this collection will instead receive the uninstall version of that task sequence. And then when they run the task sequence, or of that task sequence or uh, collection variable, and then when they run that task sequence, they will know that they need to do the uninstall operation, right? And so all of this effort to belabor the point about controlling how you do the install and uninstall with the task sequence, a couple of different ways I'm showing you here. You can have separate task sequence where you have one that does the install, one that does the uninstall. Basically, they're, they're mirror images reversed of each other. Or you can do it all in one. And there's probably other ways that can be thought of to um, do it as well. No matter how you do it, making sure that you have an accurate detection method and all of the other pieces required uh, is really, 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 really important um, to, uh, to make sure this happens, right? Okay, so that said, let me show you what this looks like uh, actually working. Now, as I pull in the lab, let me just tell you up front, this is going to be a really simple demo. Um, in fact, the simplicity of the demo almost kind of makes the assumption that this is not as powerful as it is. And it really is. It's, it's pretty interesting. Such a simple demo for the incredible power of having a task sequence associated with uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the application, right? So what I have here are my two uh, task sequences that I've deployed. I do have an old rich copy uh, deployment from when I've done some other testing. But here are the two, uh, demo one, uh, demo two, right? So demo one is, is where I have the two separate task sequences. In fact, um, my retry is just because I've had some failures. So I'm going to go ahead and let me show you, first of all, that this, um, oops, yeah, I just want to make sure that all this is gone from me doing some testing before. 
uh, at least make sure that this is empty of the task sequence log. Let me get rid of you. Why can't I get rid of you? All right, stand by. Let me get rid of this file. Okay, so I'm back. So in order to get rid of that, uh, I had to reboot, but I'm clear now. So there's nothing here. There's no task sequence log. Uh, everything's good to go, right? Okay, so now, again, kind of a bit of a yawn, but let's go actually run this and show you what happens. So I'm going to retry this, and so it's going to go, look, wait to apply changes. should happen very, very, very quickly that we just flip over to, um, uh, to installed. So letting it just process here for a minute. And yeah, that quickly, it just goes ahead and says install. So I didn't even see the task sequence engine come up. Uh, if you look, you'll see that I do have the task sequence log here, right? Um, nope, actually, you know what? I, I forgot. I actually do have, interesting, I did have rich copy installed here already. No big deal. Uh, let me just show you. So I did have rich copy installed. That's the one piece that I forgot to clean up. I cleaned up the logs, but I do have rich copy installed. Not a big deal, though. Because I have the other uninstall uh, task sequence. And so what happened was that I ran the task sequence and it detected because of my detection logic. Actually, I'm glad I kind of did this, right? Because it detected because of my detection logic that the application was there. It just flipped over and said installed. And so not a big deal. But now I have the opportunity to uninstall this. So I'm going to go ahead and click uninstall. And the, the very first thing that will happen when this task sequence runs is that the device will reboot. And then the uninstall will happen after the reboot comes back up. So you should see the, the task sequence uh, progress bar come up now uh, as soon as it kicks in and tell you that you're going to reboot, that it's going to reboot the system. And then it'll do that. Here we go. So that's, that's what you would expect. It's going to do a restart. And I'm going to go ahead and restart now. And then it will come back up and, uh, and, and finish up the uninstall of that particular app, right? So now one thing about this is whenever you come back up, the, the device is not going to log in automatically. I'm going to go ahead and log in myself. And then the task sequence will continue in the background, as you'll see. So let this um, uh, happen, and then hopefully it'll happen all pretty quick. All right. So that was the reboot. Let's just show you that the task sequence logs are actually in play here uh, as we get logged in. Hopefully it won't be done by the time we're already in. But either way, we'll see what's going on. So, all right, cool. So we're logged in. Let's see if Rich Copy is still here or not. So Rich Tools looks like it is. And so uh, if I go look at my logs here, here's my task sequence logs. And so we are in process, in flight of doing this. And what I should see, probably will, is that I'm waiting for the CCM exec service to be fully operational. So we have already done the uninstall, or uh, sorry, the, uh, the reboot. So I'll just search up reboot. So you see where I've, uh, well, let me go on up. Go on up, go on up. Uh, keep keep going. Well, I should have probably chosen another one. Process, okay, let's keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I chose the wrong the wrong search term, but that's okay. We have a little bit of time. All right, fine. Successfully, let's see, completed. If not that, I'll use instruction. Uh, let's see. Process completed, shut down, keep going. Ah. All right, I'm going to find this for you. Hang on a second. Okay, that's what I wanted to find. I found instruction as my search term, and here's my start executing the instruction, and uh, should be able to go on down, and we'll find a finished executing instruction here in just a minute. I believe. Uh, well, it looks like it, it passed out by. Anyway, the restart happened. You saw it, right? 
And so with, um, with all of that, hopefully I've had enough time for the uh, CCM exec service to become fully operational. Let's see. Okay, so still waiting. So we'll wait for just a second and uh, let that progress through in the log. And then the next step will be for uh, the uninstall to happen. So I'll come right back whenever the service is up and running. Well, as quickly as that, even before I pause the video, the, uh, the log is gone. So because the log is gone under here, we know that in fact, it's, it's moved forward. So let's go on in, into the log and look um, here. I'll just search from here, waiting. Uh, waiting for the CCM exec service to be fully operational. That's where we were, and we're scrolling on down now, and it's just going to do its thing to uninstall the uh, the app. So we're doing the download that we need to verify and uh, so on. And then this is the download that didn't happen before because I already had the app installed, and I forgot that I didn't clean that up. That's okay. So it is uninstall. It downloads now, so it has the source files to do the uninstall. And then, um, the, again, the, the kind of the weird logic here, notice installing software for package. We're not really installing software. We're uninstalling software. If you understand Edge because you've built it, that the install software here is really the uninstall because of the, the task sequence you've supplied, that it's all good, right? So ta uh, process completed and exit code zero. So in theory, uh, we should not have rich copy on the machine anymore. So let's go see, right? All right, so scrolling down. And in fact, I do not have Microsoft rich tools anymore. So the task sequence did exactly what it was supposed to do and removed that particular application. Again, the, the demo here is kind of a yawn in some ways because this just works the way it's supposed to. And the task sequence I'm using is just not all that complex, but I did want to make sure you saw the reboot uh, can be fully accommodated, no problem. What I'm not going to show you is the demo two, where the same task sequence installs and uninstalls because it kind of gets redundant. Hopefully, you understand based on how I've built that, how that works uh, as well. All right? Okay. So wrapping up now, in terms of troubleshooting tips and tricks, right? standard logs. You saw me look at the SMSTS log for the task sequence. It's absolutely there. Um, for looking at the execution of the task sequence. Other logs apply, such as app enforce. If you if you were doing applications, it would be app enforce. But in this case, I did packages. Uh, and remember, applications aren't supported. They might be in the future. This is a pre-release feature, not sure. But if you were if you were doing packages like I did, then you would be using the client, right? So the again, you're kicking off an application. The application runs a task sequence, the task sequence in my case, runs a package. So all of the standard logs apply. In the case of a package, uh, execution manager would be your starting point, right? So all of those you can uh, follow through. So in terms of tips and tricks, so I mentioned this is pre-release a couple of times. One of the things that I know is coming, we document it, but it's not there today, is actually the ability to deploy to a user collection. That is planned. It's not there yet. Don't know when it's going to come. Don't know if it'll be in 2010 of Config Manager or later, but it is on the roadmap. Um, I mentioned the install application task sequence step is not one that uh, that we support. Uh, we uh, fully support using the install package step instead and recommend that, right? Um, interestingly, and this is just me playing around, I got the install application step to work in 2002, but I, I kept hitting roadblocks in 2006. I don't know if we put in, in, in any explicit blocks or, you know, what happened, but either way, we never have supported it since it was released. Uh, use packages instead of applications, at least this, uh, as of this recording, which is part of 2006, right? And that's really it. Again, simple discussion piece here. Uh, very, very powerful piece now of Configuration Manager for deploying applications. And with that, we will wrap the session here, and we will see you next time.